My name is Kyungbin. I was born in Seoul, Korea. My occupation is chef. I grew up in the South Bay, um, Torrance Garden area. Pretty much lived there my whole like youth time. My family is pretty small. Uh, I have my dad, my mom, and then a younger sister. That's pretty much it for the immediate family. And I have like one aunt here, and then everybody else is back in Korea. So my aspirations as a child, I actually found out pretty early. Um, I always wanted to become a chef. So when I first immigrated, uh, my family actually lived with my aunt um, and we would actually have dinners together. And me being like the only child at that time, um, I would help like set up the plates, you know, help cook, you know, and just be able to, you know, be a part of like the whole dinner service act of it. And I think what really got me was seeing the, the instant gratification of like, oh, I was part of this and being able to see somebody eat something and like enjoy it that you helped create was like something that really always stuck with me. Um, like even now, like with my restaurant, like when I meet my customers or, you know, they leave good reviews, it's like, it's like this really good feeling of like, oh, like I did that shit, you know, like that, that was me. I made them happy. And like, I, I drive for that. Like when I hear that, it's like, it gives me like a pump of like, all right, let's fucking keep going. Let's keep going, you know, like it's it's fun. Since I was young, um, because I didn't really plan on going to college or anything like that, and I already knew, oh, I wanted to go into like the food and beverage industry. So right out of high school, I got a job as a server, um, saved up money, and then eventually saved up enough to uh, pay my way into a private culinary school. Um, after that, I worked anywhere from like in the OC to all around LA um, with like bigger restaurant groups, uh, small restaurants, anywhere from like high-end, like fine dining to like upscale casual. So I'm pretty well versed in a lot of like the food and beverage industry. So I feel like a lot of people do recommend going to culinary school, which that was the route I did take. But I was also, you know, working at a restaurant at the same time. Culinary school was cool and all, sort of kind of um, expensive. I don't think it was necessary for me. Um, when I started actually working in restaurants in the back of house, because I also knew whether you're out of college or out of like culinary school or not, you're going to stay still start at the same level. When I started culinary school, it's like the foundation is a classic French. Um, I feel like as times are evolving, a lot of restaurants sort of find newer techniques and better ways to be more efficient with things. So I don't think culinary school was that big of a help for me. But yeah, just working around a lot of restaurants and you know, learning different things, different styles. And then eventually, you know, now with my own restaurant, it's just a mashup of like what I've learned and then now just adding my own like flair to it. How I got here, um, so it was during the, pretty much the pandemic was what like initiated everything. Um, so me and my partners, we always, you know, we talked and we were always, you know, thinking about opening up a restaurant down the road. But when the pandemic hit, we pretty much all got furloughed, um, <clears throat> not knowing if we're going to be able to go back to work anytime soon. One of my partners, Tong Yuk, he started like a meal prep company. Me and my other partner, Min Su, uh, we started like a dry aging, dry aged meat company, all e-commerce, which was doing really good at the beginning of pan uh, the pandemic. So we were like, okay, why don't we just come together, just put in some money, let's just rent out a kitchen space. Because at that point, we just needed uh, more space to like expand the business. And then we started creating multiple concepts. Um, we had, we created one called Insadong, which was like takbar, so like chicken feed, uh, and then like kopchang, like small intestines. Um, and then we're doing that during the pandemic as well. We also created Hanshik, which is the restaurant, um, as like a storefront. So everything for us was supposed to be e-commerce um, because, you know, it was during the pandemic. But I feel like when we announced Hanshik um, because it was like a Korean fusion concept. Eater blew us up and then after that we got like Infatuation, Thrillist, um, we had a lot of eyes on us and then Hanshik just got super busy um, and then we transitioned a to-go based system into like a outdoor patio because everyone wanted to dine in. So at that time you know we were the only ones in the plaza so we're like you know fuck it throw a whole bunch of like benches and tables out there and then eventually people were like oh we want to make reservations you guys have alcohol. So now we're like okay like I guess we can set up tables and start taking reservations. At first we did like BIOB since we didn't have our license. And then once everything started opening up again, um, we had more tenants into the plaza and they weren't too happy with us doing outdoor dining. So we had to shift in to the restaurant, which is a very small space. Luckily, you know, we got, we were busy. So we saved up money, did like a couple interior fixes. It was like a reverse, like, like we started completely backwards where it's like, it wasn't like a proper, like you start with pop-ups. Eventually, you know, you do like, special dinners and then you get into restaurant space. Yeah, we're just going from to go to straight into restaurant and just like, 
like what the fuck are we doing you know but yeah that's pretty much how we got here i mean it was thanks to a lot of like community i think that's like the only reason why we survived this long um and even because of that, you know, we try to do a lot of like community labor or not labor, but like donations and stuff like that, just to, like give back. So how I navigate through how I want to cook Korean food is it's evolving as I'm learning more about Korean food myself. Um, so at the beginning, when I first started, because I was very, I, I knew very little about how to properly cook a lot of Korean dishes and things like that. I started off uh, just fus fusing flavors. Um, so I would take, for instance, like I have a dish called like bulgogi risotto. Um, so what I did was with like my understanding of food, I broke down components of dishes and looked for different like other ethical or ethnical dishes and see what has like similar components and like flavor profiles. And then I would sort of like then go into R&D and start like mashing the two dishes together. Once again, like the bulgogi risotto, if I break down bulgogi, it's pepper, sweet, um, like dark, dark sweetness, um, beefy, and then a little peppery as well. And then risotto, it's also, it's like creamy, umami. Um, you know, if you use mushrooms, mushroom is technically like a vegetarian meat option. Um, there's usually cheese in it. Um, cheese also goes well with prugogi. So now it's like tying all these little details and then it's like, okay, maybe I can like fuse it together, see what happens. And then once I tried it, it's like, oh shit, okay, it's fucking delicious. The food that I put out, it's very, self-motivated being a chef and like trying to be a like creator of food um i try not to like kiss ass to the customers like it's like one of those like like irks that i have especially with like yelp and stuff it's like oh this is too salty but it's like at the end of the day it's like i want you to eat this how i want to eat it and like if you don't like it that's fine right the reason for me of like why we started the hanshik brand was to sort of like introduce korean flavors more because i feel like even though like K-Town's like OG mom pop stores. If you're a non-speaking Korean person, you go to like these OG spots, you're only gonna order what you know. Um, and it's hard to like communicate and like explore the other dishes. Like when I was younger, um, when like my friends asked me, oh, you wanna go eat Korean food? You know, I'm like, yeah, I'm fucking down. The immediate thing that everyone thinks of Korean food is what, like KBBQ, right? And it's like, I, I hated that stigma where it's like, there's so much fucking more than just Korean barbecue or like kimbap, you know, it's like they only know what they know until they're introduced by somebody. So now with Hanshik, what I was doing was I was playing around with Korean flavors, but once again, presenting in more of a Western perspective. Um, so it's not too off-putting. My, my whole dream goal about th this whole situation with Hanshik was like, oh, okay, like if I can like make them understand these flavors in like a comfortable way, maybe then they can go back to like these OG spots and be like, oh, okay, like I had this variation of it, but now let me try the OG one. And then that was like my thought process of like, oh, I hope this is what happens, you know? Not necessarily trying to like gentrify anything, but it's like, I just want to be that middleman to like blur the line between like Western and Korean. Uh, my future aspirations with uh, Hanshik, it's still the same. I, I still want to, you know, be able to introduce Korean food in a different light. I, I do want it to be more exposed to more non-people, non-Korean people that I haven't really, you know, experienced or like ventured into like K-Town restaurants. And once again, it's like, I just want to be that middleman to be like, oh, you know, just try it here and then go to K-Town so you can be a little bit more comfortable. Um, but yeah, that's the goal. My name is Min Kyung Bin and this is my Korean American story.